So in this video, I want to go over how to use the more general inner product or a custom defined inner product to calculate the angle uh, between two vectors. And if you're not familiar with the, the more custom defined or generalized uh, inner product, uh, please review the previous videos where I discuss it in, in greater detail. Um, but just as a reminder of what I mean by the angle between two vectors, uh, the, if we remember the, the definition for the cosine of the angle between two vectors is equal to first the, the inner product, which in our previous cases was just the you know standard dot product, divided by, sorry, let me write that again, divided by the length of x times the length of y. So if we're using the standard dot product, the, this is going to be equal to well, the inner product between x and y under the you know the standard um, dot product is going to be equal to um, you know x transposed times the identity matrix times y. Oops, sorry, times y divided by the length of x here. We know from the previous videos. If you're unfamiliar, please review how to use the inner product to calculate the length of a vector, but we can write this as the um, same thing as the inner product or the square root of the inner product between x and itself, where the, the inner product between x and itself follows this inner product here. I just don't want to write it again, multiplied by the inner product between y, the square root of the inner product between y and itself. And so if we were to um, write this out, uh, let's first give an example, like let's imagine over here, I'm gonna write our example like that we had x equal to um, one, one. And then we have y equal to one, two. Then the, let me draw a, you know, just a familiar coordinate system here. Then we have one, two, three. Two, three, that's much better. One, two, three. One, one would be right here. And this would be x equal to one, one. And then y, I'm gonna change uh, colors real quick. Y is gonna be one, two. And so we're gonna go um, one here and then up to, so we're gonna get y right there. So y equals one, two. And what we're trying to get here, changing colors once more, is this angle right there. And so, and we're gonna use that doing our standard um, dot product as a, uh, using our standard dot product as the inner product to get all these values. And so the, the, the top row here, if we um, plug these uh, x and y vectors in, uh, the top row is just going to be um, x transpose y. You can almost just forget about this identity matrix. x transpose times the identity matrix is just x transpose. That's one of the niceties of the identity matrix. And so let's just think of this whole entire thing is just x transpose y which is going to be, you know, one, one times one, two, divided by, um, well, the square root of the inner product between x and itself. I'm gonna try to make, level this out so that we don't get into those types of troubles. <laughs> Everything's slanted. Oh, okay, there you go. And so it's gonna be one, one times one, one, and then square root of, one, two times one, two. So if we can reduce everything down, the top numerator is going to be equal to one times one is one plus one times two would be two. So we have a one plus two, so we have a three up top. And then I'm all over the place today. Let me give myself some more room. And then if we have right here, and this one, we have one times itself. So that's gonna be one squared plus 
1 squared, which is just 1 plus 1, which is 2. And so we have the square root of 2. And then we have y times itself. So we have 1 squared plus 2 times 2 is 2 squared. So 1 plus 1 squared plus 2 squared is 1 plus 4. And so this is going to be the square root of 5. And then this is going to simplify to 3 over the square root of 10. And that is the, the cosine of the angle between these two vectors. Now, if we want to get the angle between these two vectors, right, then we would be dealing with the arc cosine. And so the arc cosine, if we wanted to get theta, right, so let's rewrite all of this and give myself some even more space. If we wanted to get theta, right, this would be uh, the arc cosine of this value expressed in degrees uh, because that's, uh, that's what we're going to use here. So if you don't have a scientific calculator, you can go on Google and right here uh, you can type in calculator. And so this may be a little bit out of the, per, like the view, uh, but you can go and type in calculator right there. And so what you can do is here, like you can input the value that we had. So Google's very nice about doing this. Um, so we wanted to find the arc cosine of three divided by the square root of 10. And it already gives you like parentheses suggestions. I, I find that to be nice. And the one thing we want to make sure is over here, we want to make sure that degrees is selected. Right now, the degrees is grayed out. We have uh, radians, uh, you know, highlighted. We want to select degrees so that we get this answer in degrees. And so we get 18.43. And 18.43 is our answer for the um, angle between these two vectors, x and y. And so this little orange arrow points to, oops, sorry, an angle that is 18.3 degrees. And so let's uh, try this with a one of the inner products in a previous video that we've already uh, validated the, um, the, uh, the, the properties of. And so I'm gonna clean up my screen and, and head right back. Okay, so I've cleaned up my screen, I'm keeping the same vectors um, and keeping this diagram over here. Um, but this time we're going to use an inner product that we've already previously validated. Um, so we're going to redefine this x, inner product between x and y, to be x transposed 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1 times y. And then the, the same thing um, down here, we have uh, you know the inner product of x with itself. And so that's going to be, you know, just to write it out this time, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1 times x. And then times uh, y times 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1, y. And so writing all this out, filling in the vectors, we got, you know, we have x transpose, which is 1, 1. Just rewrite that all together. There you go. Times 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Times 1, 2. And then on the bottom, we got, you know, x transposed again. A little cramped up here. My apologies, but we get it. We get the picture, hopefully. And so we have y right here transposed times 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1 times y again. And so let's go through these calculations, give myself just a little bit more space. And so let's leave this right here. There should be plenty enough. So here we go. The numerator is going to give us. Um, we're going to have to, this is going to give us again a 1 by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So we have 2 plus negative 1, which is 2 minus 1. And so we have a 1 here. 2 minus 1 is 1. <laughs> and then we have 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 plus 1. 
So negative one plus one, that's gonna give us a zero. So this is gonna be zero up top. We really don't need all that space up there and we know that space is very important. And that's going to be one of one zero times one two, and then all of this divided by uh, the square root right here is going to be. Well, we already know what you know what this evaluates to right there because um, we just did it. That's going to give us one zero times one one, and so we can do one zero times one one, and that's going to be one times one, which is. Um, let's go ahead and clean up this square root. So we have one zero times one one, and so that's gonna be, one times one is one plus zero, which is gonna be one, so we have the square root of one, which is literally just one, but let's write it out anyways. And then we're gonna need a little bit more room for this one, because we haven't done this calculation before. And so we have one times two is two plus negative two, which is two minus two, which is zero. And then one times negative one, which is negative one, uh, plus two. So negative one plus two is one. And all of that times one, two. And so let's simplify everything out. This is just a one, so we can, we can forget about it. The numerator is going to be one plus zero, so it's going to be one. And then the bottom is going to be uh, divided by the square root of this over here. And that's going to be zero times one is zero plus two. And so zero plus two is two and that's going to be one over the square root of two and that is the cosine of theta but what we really want is we really want to get theta itself and so theta is going to be equal to the arc cosine of one over square root of two and which if we go to google and we type in we clear out what we had previously. We want to get the inverse cosine of 1 divided by the square root of 2, fill in our parentheses. We make sure that, okay, we have degrees selected, it's highlighted. We press equals and we get 45 degrees. So under this new dot product, the angle between these vectors is at a 45 degree angle. 